Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to take a look at transistors I keep around on the bench and why I think they're pretty decent. Now this isn't an end-all type video of the best of the best type transistors. These are just good. Most of them are fairly inexpensive transistors that you might consider keeping on the bench and I'll discuss why I think they're pretty good. Now if you have a very specialized circuit, you might have a need for a very specialized transistor. Or if you're a service tech, you might have on hand a whole bunch of various transistors that are common. And if you have a transistor you think is worthy of mention, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But please not the everyday 3904, 3906, 2N2222 types. I mean, those are pretty ubiquitous. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first transistor is the BC337 in the NPN polarity, or its complement, the BC327 in PNP polarity. I have some of the parameters written down here. But if you want any more information, want to see the curves and things like that, the graphs and all that good stuff, just put the part number into your Googler and find the data sheet. The uh, collector to emitter voltage is 45 volts maximum. Collector current 800 milliamps. The gain of the 40 suffix part is 250 to 630. That's a very nice high gain, by the way. Transition frequency is 210 megahertz. Transition frequency, by the way, is the frequency where the transistor stops amplifying. As you increase the frequency, the gain becomes less and less and less to a point where it's not amplifying anymore. So that's, in a nutshell, what transition frequency is. Power dissipation is 625 milliwatts. Comes in a TO92 package, just like this here, and with this pinout. So why would I recommend this transistor? Well, it has a nice high gain. The uh, collector emitter saturation voltage is very low, so instead of giving off a lot of heat under high load, it will be more efficient there, be able to drive the load better. Interfaces with microcontrollers with that higher gain. And it's pretty inexpensive. It'll be more inexpensive than MOSFETs and things like that. And in a situation where you have a very low voltage microcontroller, where you don't have enough threshold voltage on a MOSFET to be able to turn it on hard enough to drive your load properly, this transistor will fit the bill nicely. The next transistor is the KSC1845 NPN, or its complement, the KSA922. Also comes in a TO92 package. This transistor is meant for preamplifiers. It's a low noise, fairly high gain transistor. Has a pretty high collector emitter voltage of 120 volts where it's used in the front ends of power amplifiers, hi-fi amplifiers, things like that. So if you're thinking about building a discrete preamplifier circuit, such as a phono preamp or something like that, I would consider looking at these low noise audio signal transistors. Next up is the 2N3866 NPN RF transistor. This is popular as an RF amplifier final stage or a driver stage in higher power circuits in AM and FM homebrew type transmitters. I'd say it's good for a watt, maybe two, in a RF output stage. Collector emitter voltage is 30, collector current 400 milliamps. The gain is pretty wide at 10 to 200. Transition frequency is 500 megahertz, or if you get the A suffix, it goes up to 800 megahertz. And a 5 watt power dissipation. Here I have a little heat sink that 
would help it dissipate maybe about a watt. You probably want something larger if you're going to go beyond that. But this just slips over the metal can here and acts as your heat sink. TO39 case and this is the pinout looking up from the bottom. Next up is the BD139 NPN or its complement the BD140 PNP transistor. This device is fairly popular in driver stages of audio amplifiers and if the amplifier is of fairly low power such as 2 or 3 watts it could be used as the output transistor itself. Maybe even more, it has a pretty decent power dissipation for a mid to low power transistor of 12.5 of watts on a good heat sink. And I won't go through all the parameters here. Like I said, you can Google up the data sheet if you need any more information. Comes in a TO-225 package with this pin designation. Next up is the TIP3055 NPN or the TIP2955 complement PNP transistor. I included these because for a power transistor they are pretty cheap, though they are nothing really special. Under high current, such as 10 amps, the uh, gain can drop pretty low down to 10 or so, but I think the data sheet specified the gain at 4 amps, 20 to 70. You know, it's not a particularly fast transistor, doesn't have a lot of gain, but it does handle a lot of current and fairly decent amount of power. And they're really common and cheap. So, you know, if you need to switch or control a decent amount of power, these are certainly a transistor worth considering. Comes in a TO220 package with the typical pinout like this. Now we'll take a look at a Darlington transistor, the BDX33 NPN, and it has a complementary version too, the BDX34 PNP. These have various suffixes for the uh, type of voltage rating. I think they go up to 100 volts with the C version, but I believe I have the B version here of 80 volts. Fairly decent collector current at 10 amps and a pretty high gain of 750. Being a Darlington transistor at lower currents that might go even higher, maybe over a thousand. I'd have to look at the datasheet graphs. 70 watt power dissipation. So this is great when you need a lot of gain you know, coming off a microcontroller's very weak output, you know, it might be a few milliamps, and with the high gain, you can drive a much larger load than you can with, say, the BC337 transistor. And you don't have to worry about the low gate threshold voltages of MOSFETs, where it only takes about 1.6 volts to turn on a Darlington transistor. Next up is the FJP5200 NPN or the FJP1943 PNP complement. These are purpose-built audio output transistors. They have a high collector emitter voltage of 250 volts, 17 amp collector current, and for a high power transistor has pretty good gain. Like I said, the linearity of the gain is excellent. Transition frequency is 30 megahertz. If you look at older transistors, which were used back in the 70s in uh, output stages, you'll see one megahertz, um, two or three, sometimes four, maybe five megahertz. But you know these are much faster transistors. And you see the power dissipation of this is 80 watts. That doesn't seem like a lot, but that's because it's in a TO220 style case, and these are limited as to their output. This transistor is available in a much higher power package, the 264 package, which can dissipate 150 watts. 
In other words, the exact same transistor die is used here, as in the higher power package. They had to derate it just because the TO220 can't dissipate as much heat. And I use the TO220 package here because, you know, for tinkering, you know, testing a circuit or something, you can plug it into a breadboard. Though, you know, you, you don't want to put that kind of current through a breadboard. But I use them all the time for their high voltage and decent gain for a power transistor. Now we'll take a look at a MOSFET transistor. This is the IRFZ44. It's an in-channel enhancement mode type MOSFET. It's for lower voltage type circuits. The drain to source voltage max is 60 volts. Continuous drain current of 36 amps. I always wondered about these values. You see that a lot on these MOSFETs. They're very high. The pulsed current rating is even higher than this. And how are you going to get 36 amps through these spindly little leads they have on them? But I digress. The RDS on, this is the equivalent resistance when the transistor is turned on with a certain gate voltage, I think at 10 volts. And that's a very low value. So the transistor when it's uh, conducting, it's not going to get very hot even with a fairly decent amount of current because of this value being so low. Power dissipation is 150 watts. Really? In a TO220 case? Uh, that's a little optimistic. I, these, uh, I just, somebody enlighten me. I, I see these crazy ratings on these MOSFET transistors. And how do they come up with these values? Uh, this value here is called a figure of merit. It's not so cut and dry how it's calculated because it depends on voltages, uh, temperatures, even how you're going to use the MOSFET. But in a simple form, you take the gate charge times the RDS on value multiply those together and you get a figure of merit. The lower the value, the better the transistor. You want this value to be low. And at about two, this is really good. I'm sure there are newer transistors out that will beat that. But for a fairly inexpensive, ubiquitous, lower voltage MOSFET transistor, that's pretty darn good. One thing you have to realize about these transistors, the gate is not electrically connected at all. There's actually an insulator between the gate and the rest of the transistor, and it controls the current flow through the transistor by the field effect, or the, the voltage level that's on that gate. So in a switching situation, you're pushing a charge onto the gate when it goes high, and you got to pull that charge off of the gate when it goes low. You know, high, on, you got to push that charge in, off, low, you got to pull that charge out. So, you know, if you're switching at a very high frequency, you're pushing that charge on and off very fast, and it's quite a strain on the driver circuit tree. You have to have a circuit that is up to snuff to be able to drive these things in a switching type situation. So having the lowest possible gate charge would be ideal. And also having this RDS on value as low as possible is quite desirable. So that's kind of why we have that figure of merit rating here. And if you're going to use the MOSFET with lower voltages, make sure you use a lower voltage MOSFET. Because the higher voltage MOSFETs will have a higher RDS on value and you know the the figure of merit won't be nearly as low. Another MOSFET I occasionally use is the IRF644 in channel enhancement mode. It has a drain the source voltage of 250 volts, drain current 14 amps continuous, RDS on of 0.28 ohms, 
power dissipation 125 watts again uh, really in a TO220 huh you can see here the figure of merit is 19 and I calculated that again I went to the data sheet and took the uh, total gate charge times the RDS on value and that's what I came up with as you can see here it's a uh, full order of magnitude higher than the IRFZ 44 because that's a much lower voltage MOSFET and the um, RDS on is an order of magnitude higher so you're going to end up with that higher value. I'll leave you with one more MOSFET transistor here the STB14NM50N this is a later model type transistor and it has an even higher drain the source voltage of 500 volts. Collector current is 12 amps. RDS on is a reasonable 0.28 ohms. Power dissipation 90 watts. And you can see here the figure of merit is much lower than the uh, 644 we looked at before. This is only 7.6. That's a pretty good value for such a transistor. It's designed to have a low gate charge. That's why you know, the previous transistor had the same RDS on value, but the figure of merit is much lower. In fact, the uh, total gate charge rating on this transistor is only about 27, where the other one was a lot higher. I think it was 63 or something like that. So this transistor is much easier to drive. It's much easier to put the charge on that gate and remove it in a fast switching situation. So this would be an interesting transistor to play around with in uh, high speed power supply type circuits. Well that just about wraps it up for transistors I would recommend and I use them on my bench. It's not an exhaustive list or anything like that but some standout transistors that I have that I would certainly recommend trying out. And like I said earlier, if you know of a transistor that I didn't mention that's really a standout product, that might be something worthwhile, certainly mention it down in the comments and uh, just don't put a part number in. Say why it is a good transistor, something I might take a look at or somebody else, it might benefit somebody else in some way. I would also mention if you're going to buy these transistors, all of them should be available now. I would go to a place like Mauser or DigiKey. Don't buy the crap off of eBay. Don't get stung with counterfeit parts. Get parts that are going to perform correctly and make your circuit work properly and all that good stuff. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.